All right, y'all, what's going on? What's going on? All right, so today I'm making the world famous meatloaf recipe. So if you're new to the channel, please, please, please subscribe to the channel. Go and subscribe. And even if you aren't new, if you haven't subscribed, definitely go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell so you get notifications the next time we post a video and leave us some comments down below. Let us know things you like to see us try, things you like to see us cook. Interact with us because we do like to hear from you. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. The first thing I always do, y'all always see me do it, I'm going to start cutting my veggies up. Just moving my potatoes out the way. So, we are dicing our uh, peppers and onions. I think that I will go ahead and use the whole thing. Yeah, so I like to have a lot of um, a lot of veggies in my meatloaf, so I'm going to use this whole red onion and whole green onion and the whole onion. I mean, green pepper, red pepper, and onion. Right now, I'm just uh, taking the core out of there and de-seeding them. Take that same bag of onions that I had that I told y'all was the ones that was affected, okay, folks? Now these potatoes, I'm cutting these up. I'm just gonna kind of cut them up very loosely, not nothing too crazy, because uh, you know they're gonna boil, and I'm gonna mash them up, so I'm not gonna cut them up too small. Also, I cleaned the skin. Uh, I, when I wash my vegetables, I literally wash them with whatever dish, you know, dish detergent that I'm using or what have you. Um, so that's what I did. I washed the skin because I like to leave the skin on there. And I just got, I'm making homemade mashed potatoes, so I got just three big rusted potatoes. I told you all before that I do like to use red skin potatoes. Yes, the bus, yes. What's up? However, uh, I didn't want to get that big old bag of potatoes, so I just got uh, rusted potatoes. Okay, alright, bro. I hear you. I see the bus be yelling at me, bro. Also, it keeps me from not making too many potatoes. I always have so many mashed potatoes left over before. Um, <coughs> what's wrong, man? All right. Um, our meat. So. I typically use ground turkey, but this time I got I got uh sorry that light is so bright it's always so bright but I got this Angus beef sir uh, ground sirloin because it was on sale and it was cheaper than ground beef okay so that's what I got and then also I'm going to use this Bob Evans zesty hot sauce which is all even if you don't like the hot putting sausage in there just take it to a whole nother level okay 
Now my sister is going to be in the comments asking why I'm giving y'all this recipe, but just so that she know and y'all know, I did tell my dad that I was doing this video before I was doing it. So I'm gonna just put that whole thing in there. And also, you go, I mean, you can get gloves, but it's gonna get messy, okay? I'm just gonna mix it with my hands. Um, now that we've got our meat in here, we're going to go ahead and season it. So you literally can season it, season it any way you want. Uh, the seasons that I always typically put in here are some garlic. Is some garlic powder. And you know, I'm very generous with my seasonings. You know, I season until you know the Lord whisper in my ear and He'd be like, "Stop!" And then I stop. You feel me? All right. So I got some more garlic powder because you know you got to stay. You got to stay with the garlic powder. I need to. Well, when I when I get more space, I will get bigger containers because it, it definitely is easier to have bigger ones or whatever because I'm getting these little ones and they just run out so fast. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to put that in there. I told y'all that my dad always be putting turmeric and stuff just for the health benefits. So I'm going to go ahead and slide, slide a little bit of that up in there. I'm going to put some black pepper. Oh, I didn't show y'all that. Turmeric. Black pepper. Yeah, you may see the bubby running, uh, crawling around there. Black pepper. You all right, man? Uh, you okay? Oh, what I had this empty. Hey, 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 it's okay. It's okay, okay? It's okay. It's like, girl, it's not okay. Some Italian seasoning, you know, I'm gonna be real liberal with that, okay? Let's see, I want some seasoning salt. Where is my seasoning salt? I really like this, um, this Goya set, uh, was it? I don't know. Sazon Sazonator total. Uh -huh. Put some of that in there. I should have had my seasonings ready, y'all. My bad. And it is not a. Uh, uh, <laughs> redundant to like if you get some the real thing in there to put the season in there so for example i have onions in here i'm definitely still putting onion powder in here I also uh like if you cook with garlic or put garlic in there i also still put garlic in there like you know you really can you know put whatever flavoring you want in here that's gonna be good okay uh, i'm gonna put this steak seasoning in here too Real time. Oh, is it gonna focus? May not focus. Okay. Uh, and then I think that's all the seasonings I'm gonna put in there. I think. What is this? Yeah, I think that's all the seasonings I'm gonna put in there. Then I'm also going to add some breadcrumbs. Now, I usually like to use the Italian breadcrumbs, but they didn't have Italian. They only had plain. I'll put some, I, I, I'm going to probably put like maybe at least a third of a cup of breadcrumbs in here. I may add more as I'm, um, you know, mixing it up. I'm just looking to see if there's anything else I want to add in here. I really know what coriander does, but I feel like I want to add some of that in there. Now listen, I just really, sometimes I just be putting stuff in here. Okay? Mama! But watch, it's about to be the bomb, dude. It's going to be the bomb and a little bit of Cajun seasoning, too. Cajun seasoning. Sorry, my ring light is right there, so it's like 
really great. All right. All right, for real, for real, that's all the season I'm gonna put in there. Now, I put the breadcrumbs, and I need a couple eggs. I'm gonna put like three eggs in here. Oh, and I was gonna say in regards to the sausage, I like to have like two parts meat and one part sausage. So that was that's two pounds of um, meat, and then that's one pound of sausage. You know, you don't want the sausage to over overtake your meal. Okay, so now that we got everything in here, we're gonna go ahead and mix this up with our hands. Okay, you can get some gloves. I'm just gonna use my hands. Feel like I want to crack one more egg in here. So I added four eggs total. I'm gonna spray this. I typically are, I'm obsessed with getting the olive oil cooking spray, so that's what I got. All right, and then you're just gonna transfer from the bowl to the pan and you're gonna make a loaf, okay? Because it's meat loaf. Literally 
was just gonna try to make this into a loaf. Now I really truly was trying not to make this much, but that's okay. Maybe I'll send some. My dad is coming down here today. Because we're doing a draft, so maybe. just want to, you know, make make it a loaf. Make it look like a loaf, you know, a loaf of bread. Okay, now I already have my oven preheated. My oven, as I've told you guys before, it doesn't get as, like, I have to put my higher. I'm using an electric stove. I have to, like, sometimes just heighten the temperature a little bit just so it can get to a, a temp, you know, a normal temperature. So I have mine at like 380, but I was gonna tell you guys to do it at like 375. We're gonna cook it on 375, 380, depending on how you should know your stove or whatever, for like an hour. Um, checking, and we're gonna cook it on like for an hour cover. And then at some point we will take the cover off just so that the top can get a little brown. All right, so that's my loaf. All right, so cover it up. Like I said, cook it for about an hour, three, okay? All right, so now I've got my potatoes. Um, I'm gonna fill this up with water, some cold water. Doesn't matter how much water because you're gonna really pour it out anyway. But um well one thing you can do if you want it, you can kinda like, you know, rinse them a little bit and then uh then put the water back in there. I'm gonna fill it out with some water. I'm also which I did have fresh uh, garlic at one point, but I, uh, I'm it expired. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some, I'm gonna put some minced garlic in here, but it's really good to put, um, some, ah! put some chopped garlic. I mean, some, uh, like some fresh clove, garlic cloves in there and let it cook with the potatoes. I'm telling y'all, it's gonna be the bomb. Then you just put this on high, let them boil, and then we'll come back, okay? All right, so our potatoes are boiling, 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 and um, they've been cooking for a while. Now, you want to check them, make sure that they're tender enough mm -hmm. to, um, you know, start mashing or what have you. Because you don't want no hard, gritty potatoes. You want some smooth things. So, you know, you just pick one, you just stick a fork in one. They ain't been boiling for that long, so they may not be ready. Um, nah, they're not tender enough for me. So I'm going to let them keep boiling. And then when I come back, then I'll be draining the water out. I'm going to try and salvage some of the minced garlic because I definitely want that to still be in there. But I may also add some. I will probably definitely add some more uh, once I get all the water out of there. Um, but yeah, all right. I will be back. All right, so the potatoes are ready, they're ready. I'm actually going to drain some of this into this, um, my measuring cup because I am gonna use some of the juice when I make the gravy. Use water, but I would actually rather just uh, have um, some something with some flavor in it, you know? All right, so we're gonna save that for the gravy. That is the bubby. And uh, it's okay if, if all the, you don't want like a whole lot, but if all, if you didn't drain all of it out of there, it's totally fine because you want, you you know, you want, you, you'll need a little bit of liquid. So, um, 
Immediately, I always put my butter in first because I want that to be able to melt. I am going, I, this is a, what is this? This is like the medium size. This is 16 ounces of sour cream. I am likely going to use, I'm going to use at least three fourths of this. I may use it all, but definitely three fourths. I like it. It helps just make it a little smooth. That's the bubby. He's just not happy like right now. The bubby. What's up? I'm right here. I'm right here. Left you. See, you found me. Okay, I'm also going to put some more, even though you can see that I didn't get rid of all my minced garlic, I am going to put some more in there. Pulling off so I'll get sour cream in my jar. I'm gonna put a little bit more in there because I just like garlic. I just don't feel like you could ever have too much garlic, really. I got this uh this seasoning from the Crow Ghetto, but it's a tasty seasoning and it's uh what is that ranch? chives and garlic so I'm gonna put some of that in here because it just sounded really interesting I was like ooh so even though I, ha I don't have fresh chives I got a little bit of chives in there all right I'm gonna use my I use this like I use Miss Dash this is my this is Miss Dash to me so I'm using this I am going to I also like to put ranch in my potato oh You can use whatever. Oh, I could. I should use a different kind of cheese. I usually always use American cheese, but I just thought I got some smoked gouda in the. Uh, I'm about to put a slice of smoked gouda in there. About three slices of American cheese I'm put on here. I know y'all like all this in potatoes, but trust me, it's good. Slice of smoked gouda just for a little little added flavor. My dad likes cheese. He really he is a he put cheese on everything I say. He will put cheese on dessert if it went. That's how much he likes cheese. I put seasoned salt. I actually love now seasoned salt isn't as salty as like regular salt, so you kind of need to add a you know a good a generous amount. I'm gonna put some pepper. I, I, I just love like the taste of like having baked potatoes with pepper. This is onion powder. Sorry, I ain't showing y'all. I mean, even though y'all would know what it is. Uh, put some Italian seasoning in here. I always have to just take the cap off the Italian seasoning. You know, the whole they ain't, they they didn't think the holes through on that. Italian seasoning. And some garlic powder, yes, even though I did just put um, all that garlic in there. And I'm also going to put some ranch in there. And I like to put the, like, I like to put my butter in there and I like to put the cheese on there uh, first before I start adding the seasoning. That way, you know, the heat can, like, you know, melt them up and stuff like that. And I got my masher and I'm just gonna mash. Now I always keep talking about this masher and how I don't like it, but when I tell you I've had this thing for years and I still haven't got the one I really I want a metal one. I mean my sister and I when we lived together, we had a metal one. And I really like that one. Um and I want to get another one, but I just have not. So what you're doing, you just smashing these up. You can smash, you can have them as chunky or as you know, smash as you would like. As you would like, you can put them in a food processor or a blender if you want to. I like, I just smash, mash them like this.
Man, I'm telling you, it just get all of this. It just gives it so much flavor. And I also told y'all in that other uh, what was it barbecue video that I do like. I typically do like using red skin potatoes. Um, but again, I didn't. Um, I just didn't want to get that big old bag of potatoes. I just got three rest of potatoes because I wanted to eliminate the factor of making too too much mashed potatoes, which is what I always do. And then the meatloaf be gone, but I still be having mashed potatoes left. Hopefully y'all can see what's going on here. And they, uh, you know, I like a mash, but I do like, a, you know, I like a little, you know, taste a little bit of potato in there. Ain't nothing wrong with that. It don't got to be like totally, totally smooth for me. But again, you can do what, what works for you. And then typically I always, I'm, I'm always going to taste it. And usually... If it need anything, it's always seasoning salt. When my sister, when we lived together and I always would make it, it was either seasoning salt or cheese was the, the ingredient that it was missing. And I typically don't uh, taste, I'll be tasting my food as I'm making it, but these I do because... I would be con health conscious, but I typically would just put my finger right back on in there. But I washed it off, y'all. So y'all don't think I'm gross. Perfecto. Perfecto. I'm going to let the bubby taste sound. Mmm. That's good, dog, ain't it? Ain't it? Ain't it? Ain't it? Yeah, that's good. You like that? Um, and when it, when the bubby get bigger, then the, our favorite thing was being in the kitchen, man. You get to have, you know, the utensils. So this will be, we get to have the, the masher and uh, and eat the masher. Um, so I am, and it's okay if it's not totally, totally ready. Uh, if the meatloaf isn't ready, you just gonna you know, take it out real quick and use some of that juice. So, ooh, I'm gonna go out. Let's just see what it's looking like this far. Looking like this far. Now me, sometimes I like to just scrape all the, the fat and stuff off, and I like to just go ahead and take that out of there. I don't know. It grosses me out. I don't want it. So now I'm going to lift this up and just pour as much of the juice into my saucepan here that I've got on high. Cause you don't want the you don't want the juice to cool down. So I'm just gonna pour what I can off of here, okay? Without tilting my, of course, tilting my uh, meat loaf over. And I'm actually now that I've taken that off, I'm going to put the meat loaf back in the oven. I'm going to leave it uncovered. This has been cooking for a good minute now. So I'm going to leave it uncovered and put it back in the oven. Alright. So we got that going now. We are going to make our gravy. The bug is upset. No surprise there. He is always so angry with me. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get y'all in close on the gravy pan here. Y'all seen me make gravy before, but we're gonna do it again. You know what I'm saying? 
because you can just never have too many tutorials on how to make gravy. So it's real simple. Okay, so we're gonna stir us in some flour until it gets kind of clumpy, right? So what you're doing is essentially you're just you're making a roux, okay? So I don't know how much flour that is, but then now that you got your little base going here, you're gonna add this uh the what's it called? The potato water. And you're gonna add that in until you know you get it a little thick. I mean until you break up all that the base of the, the roof. Okay. And then basically you just gonna you gonna continue you gonna repeat this process until you get the amount of gravy that you want. So and that's if you want a gravy. I, I typically don't make a ketchup sauce with my um, meatloaf because I put gravy. Well, I put, I do actually put ketchup on my meatloaf, but I just don't make the ketchup sauce. Well, I'm sure it's not difficult. And I did think about trying to experiment and try to make a ketchup sauce, but I ain't about to do nothing that I don't normally be doing. And I don't do that, so. <laughs> And you always constantly stir because you don't want your gravy to be clumpy. Okay? Alright, we're going to add some more of our potato water. And you're constantly stir because you just don't want, I don't want clumps in my gravy. That's looking like some good gravy there. I kind of might still, I might do it one more time just because I actually want those, I want that, uh, that of, uh, was it, what I want, what I want y'all, the garlic in the bottom of that, uh, measuring cup. So I'm going to just add a little bit more. Important to do it fast, continuous, and fast, okay? And hopefully, this ain't too, it's probably been too bright this whole time. I could have, like, or... kind of see what's going on here. Looks like it's real dark right there. A little bit more flour. And then, we should be good to go, folks. Then you just sit there and eat. it's gonna thicken up. But you basically want to do it until you get the desired thickness and or thinness of the gravy that you want. I don't know, I like mine in the middle, you know what I'm saying? I don't want it to be too thick, but I don't, I don't like water. I, I told you, I like thick sauces. I don't like watery sauces, so. But it's going to thicken up. And then, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some bouillon cubes. You can kind of turn your fire down, put it on medium. Now, you ever hear the bubby? He's like, he, he trying to tell y'all too. The bubby said, turn the, turn the fire down, folks. All right. It's looking like it's gonna be a good gravy, okay? Then I'm gonna put, I got some bouillon, some beef bouillon cubes. I'm gonna put maybe like one or two of them in here. I mean, it's got flavor, you know. I mean, you add the flour, so you gotta add the flavor back into there because the flour kind of takes the flour, the flavor away. So, um. How many I'm gonna add? And you want it, so you add flour for, I mean, you add bouillon cubes for not only the flavor, but you also adding it for color as well, because, you know, with adding all that flour, it kind of like, you know, made it this bright color. So you want it, you're adding the beef bouillon cubes to kind of bring that flavor back. I mean, that, that color back. Have it a beef looking color. You can also 
and instead of using the if you think it's gross to use the um, potato water you can use beef uh, broth or stock which I actually still did have some in there but I like using the potato water one because the potato like usually the potatoes are typically still cooking as I'm making the gravy so I would just you know get the water from there but I like to use, we use the hot water because otherwise you know it take your gravy you know it helps to just keep the cooking process going you use cold water then it kind of halts it a little bit and then what I like to do in my gravy is I also like to season my gravy a little bit so I'm gonna add a little bit it don't have to be a whole lot but I like to put a little garlic powder in here because the beef bouillon cubes obviously do have flavor but so you don't have to add a whole lot but I do like to add a little bit of something so I'm gonna add that I'm also gonna add some black pepper be careful with bubby and then I like to add parsley because I just like to have some sort of like cute what's up man man I like to add parsley because I just like I just like the parsley. You can have fresh parsley if you like, but I'm using dry. Okay. All right, and then we're gonna stir this up. And you can just let your gravy simmer for a little bit. You want the you know your beef bouillon cubes to melt in there. And then also, you know, for it to thicken up. So this is some, that, that's some good gravy right there. That is some good looking gravy. No clumps, it's just, uh, it's, it's got the little garlic things in there, okay? So uh, that, I show, what I show y'all, how to make the, um, I'll show y'all what the meatloaf look like when it comes when I'm when it's done and then plate it up and then I'm actually gonna eat it because I'm that's uh what I plan on eating today, okay? So I will be back once the meatloaf is done. Okay. Alright, so this is what our meatloaf is looking like. Okay. Uh yeah, hopefully y'all can see that fairly well. Um, it's in here for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Um, you just want to cut. I like to cut it up just to make sure that it's all is like cooked all the way through. So I'm gonna plate it up and then uh, we'll peace out because I'm gonna be hungry. I'm ready to eat. <laughs> all right, good people. So here is our finished product. finished product it looks so good and i'm so excited i can't wait to eat it so thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video give it a thumbs up leave some comments down below let us know things you like to see us try things you like to see us cook interact with us because we do like to hear from you and subscribe to the channel go and subscribe and hit that bell so you get notifications the next time we post a video and we'll see you in the next one peace out mm -hmm.